I would like to invite on stage Mr. Hannes Wagner, data scientist, Wave Labs Solar Metrology Systems, GMBH. Sir, can we have you on stage? Okay, thank you for the introduction and welcome everyone to my presentation. So this presentation is actually a cooperation between Wave Labs, my company, Trina Solar, and the Australian National University. Hmm. And I will show you today how we managed to set up an analyzing framework that quantifies the different impacting factors that influence solar modules power output. And we know that this is a complex task. And we start with the question, what actually influence solar modules power output? We know that this is a multidimensional problem. We have influences from the performance of the solar cells or the question, how big is actually the impact from the cells on solar modules power output? Next, we have the binning strategy or the question, how is actually, what does the binning do with the solar modules power output? And then last, of course, we have module specific parameters, for example, solar modules, anti-reflection coating thickness, or its resistance values. And to analyze these three different steps, we came up with a modeling framework that consists on five different steps. We start with the characterization of solar cells. Next, we bin the cells with different strategies and produce solar modules out of that. And then we characterize these solar modules. Hmm. And then the information or to analyze this information, we give all these different parts to machine learning models. These machine learning models understand the hidden correlations between these different steps. And in the last steps, to make this visible for us again, we give it to explainable AI. Hmm. So this analyzes in the last step the trained machine learning models. This is the principal core of our modeling approach. I will go now through some details of this modeling but first a disclaimer, we developed this model with Trina together, but I will not show industrial mass produced data from Trina, we use simulated ones instead. And therefore I tell you briefly how we modeled the solar cells, the solar modules, and then go to the machine learning part and the explainable AI part. So let's start with the solar cell simulation. Uh, for solar cell simulations, I used Quokka 2, and to model a realistic industrial production line, we varied these eight parameters shown here um, within the ranges that are given. Um, that's what we typically see in a, this is a perk solar cell on a perk line. And if we do so, you can see here 100,000 simulated solar cells. And this is approximately or roughly what you could expect from an industrial mass production line. Hmm. So these cells are now binned in the next step they are binned by three different approaches. We bind them by efficiency, by VOC, and by JEC. And then this is given to the next step, the solar module simulation. For this task, we use the combination of PV mismatch and SunSol. And in addition to what we've varied within the solar cells, we varied six different parameters in the module. That's X and Y position of the cells within the module. Then we have modules anti-reflection coding, ribbon shading, we included a cell to module factor, and of course we have solar modules resistance values. The result looks like this. Sorry for that. Um, so these are the results from modeling the modules. We have the three different bins now, and it's always 40,000 different modules that have been simulated. Now everything is complete and we can start with the machine learning process and just to remember, we can do this with experimental data in the same way as we do it here with simulated ones. So we give now all the information to machine learning models and we use Python for this task. Python with decision trees in this case <clears throat> and we train for each of the different binning strategies, so for the three different ones, one machine learning model. And how good that worked, you can see here in the next graph, you have here on the x-axis the original module's power output has, has been simulated, and on the y-axis what comes out from, from the trained machine learning models. 
If you do this with experimental data, it doesn't look that good, but if you approximate simulated data with machine learning models, then there's no noise on this data and it works almost perfect as is shown here. So now we have trained machine learning models and we want now to understand what the different impacting factors or the different inputs in these machine learning models do. And therefore we need explainable AI. And explainable AI, uh, you can kind of define it as a set of tools that helps to interpret predictions made by a machine learning model. There are different packages available. Uh, we use, in this case, the ones from Shapley, the Shapley values. And these give us simply the impact from each different input that we feed into these models. A typical output looks like this. You have here on the x-axis the Shapley value, or you can think of that as an average impact on your target from the trained machine learning model. In our case, it's an average impact on solar modules power output. And then you have different bars in an ordered way where the thickness of the bar simply tells you how big the impact on your target is, or in our case, on solar modules power output. Having all this together, coming to the results, we start with the module-specific parameters, then go to the cell ones, then to the binning strategy, and then draw some conclusions. So the first result looks like this. You have here this, efficient, this is an efficiency binning. You have on the x-axis your average impact on solar modules power output, and you have the different analyzed impacts here in, in an ordered way. So this means the highest impact on modules power output in this case is from ribbon shading and the lowest one would be from J0 of the solar cells, J0 from the emitter. And we can do this now with the other binnings. So here's now voltage binning and current binning and you have always the same order of impacts listed here. Coming now to the to the module specific parameters. So what's purely from the model, we can see that it's almost the same between the three different binnings. And we can prove that also if we go, for example, within the efficiency binning and compare ribbon shading and the anti-reflection coating and go back to the raw data, then you can see the analysis has shown us that ribbon shading has a stronger impact than anti-reflection coating thickness, and we see this that in the first graph here, module power over ribbon shading, there's a trend, and it's almost no trend in the second one. So if you do this with these very, I would say, small data set that we've simulated, it's pretty obvious we could have plotted that and, and see this, but if you do this with MES data from a production line, then you have thousands or yeah, hundreds or even thousands of different inputs and then it's very good to have such an analyzing, analyzing framework to quantify that. Coming back to our analysis, these were module specific parameters. If we go now to cell specific parameters, so the question, how, does, how do the cells influence modules power? Then we see first that it's now different between the different binnings and we come back later to this point. But first we can do what we've done before. We can pick out here, for example, in a voltage spinning, the impact from iron concentration and from J0 of the emitter. The analysis tells us that J0 of the emitter has a stronger impact than iron. And we can prove that again by going back to the raw data. Um, we see here in both data sets trends, but we see that in the first one in the J0 of the emitter, where the analysis told us that it has a stronger impact that we see the original data, uh, yeah, the original shape of the data, or we could even double proof that by calculating another metric, for example, the Pearson correlation coefficient between modules power and iron concentration, here it's plotted and we see that it's for the J0 of the emitter, it's higher than for, uh, for the iron concentration. Coming, going back to the analysis, what's left now is um, the impact from the binning. There we see that between the different binning, if we, for example, look at iron concentration, 
then it makes a big difference if we use an efficiency binning, then the impact from iron on modules power output is higher compared to an PUC binning or JUC binning. You can look at the data again and see that. So in efficiency binning, the trend is still visible. There's also a trend in VUC and JUC binning, but what you see here that the data is compressed and what we can learn from that is that we have a more homogeneous distribution of iron due to the VUC or JUC binning within the modules compared to an efficiency bin. Let's conclude this talk. Um, first, I showed that we have a successful implementation of an analyzing framework for cell and module parameters using machine learning and explainable AI. That this framework is fully flexible for parameter ranges, spinning strategies, cell and module architectures, and we can feed in experimental or simulated data in such pipelines. Uh, in the presented case, we have module-specific parameters like ribbon shading or modules RS that have the highest impact on modules power output, but this, of course, depends on what you feed into this model. If you have other parameter ranges or if you have another cell architecture, for example, you use TopCon instead of, of FERC, then this will be different. So surprisingly for us was that with the binning, we could, in a way, influence a little bit uh, the solar cell specific parameters as I've shown by the iron concentration. And this might be useful in even combining different binning strategies to make the modules more robust against specific inputs. And last, we're currently working on adding temperature and shading effects to this. And then we repeat this analysis, but then we can also analyze what happens in the field and see on different temperature or shading ranges what the different impacts are. Wavelabs has announced a so-called flashboard, that's a data analysis pipeline where the presented model and other models are included. And I'm happy to answer any questions for that. My email address is shown here, or we can discuss further opportunities if you like at our booth here at the Renewable Energy Expo. And with this, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions later.